It's time to predict scores for week 26 of this 2022-2023 Premier League season. Our last week's top scorer with 14 points was JR and had three perfect scores as well. At the top of the leaderboard, same old story, Ferris 77 currently on 233 and a half points and Bogner rocks on 227 points. We are recording this on Wednesday evening. Liverpool and Arsenal, Wolves and Everton are all about to kick off in around about 45 minutes time. So the top scorer for last week and the leaderboard may change slightly. But let's just get down to business and make some predictions for week 26. Oh, and of course, welcome back, Nathan. Okay, so first up, we've got the midday match on BTE, which is Man City against Newcastle. Now, Newcastle, of course, losing the Carabao Cup final to Manchester United. Thought they did have the odd glimmer of hope in it, but it was Man United's game. Good to see them in a cup final, finally. And then Man City, obviously, um, in good form, hovering around where they should be. Only a couple points off Arsenal, but they do actually have a game in hand anyway. So, it's a difficult one to go with this one, because it could go either way. To be honest, it's Man City, you don't know what, which one's going to turn up. Newcastle, probably try and go for the draw as they always do. But I think, yeah, I'm going to add Man City 1-0. Just the one now, wow. Well, Newcastle yep. haven't really dropped off a cliff, but their form has nosedived recently. Mm -hmm. One win in their last six matches. Gimmer is out of sight, um, suspension, and he's got a little bit of an injury as well. It's touch and go whether he'll be back for the weekend, but he should be. Uh, Manchester City last weekend, a 4 1 mm -hmm. victory, wasn't it, away from home against Bournemouth? It is Bournemouth, though, isn't it? Yeah, they destroyed them. Bournemouth, uh, second from bottom of the table. But, uh, Newcastle, their form recently haven't been too clever. They, they're not scoring the goals as well. Uh, yeah, you know, goals are dried up. You know, they have really dried out. They're out of the um, the Champions League spaces as well. Only three goals in their last six matches they've scored as well. So I'm going to go for a Manchester City win. However, I do think Newcastle will score because Manchester City themselves have had trouble keeping clean sheets yeah, they've in actually. recent weeks. So I'm going to go for a 3 1 home victory to the citizens. Moving on to the first of the three o'clock mm. kickoffs. On Saturday we got Arsenal coming up against Bournemouth. Bournemouth being destroyed at home against Man City. Yep. And Arsenal, two wins on the bounce prior to this evening. Beat Leicester on the road in the last match. You probably think Arsenal are gonna take all three points in this one. I think they will. Defensively, they're pretty solid as well. So I can see them keeping a clean sheet. Bournemouth, they might cause Arsenal some problems? Maybe not. I'm going to go for an Arsenal 2-0 victory in this one. Interesting. Yeah, I've gone a bit lenient with it, saying Arsenal will only win this 2-0. Um, Bournemouth have been too impressed by them recently for obvious reasons. They're pretty much written into the Championship next season, but Arsenal, they're going to go out and do what they do best at home. I've like, gone quite low just to play on the safe side, but I think it could be more. It could potentially be 3 4 5 nil to be honest. So yeah, 2-0 Arsenal. Next up, moving on to Aston Villa against Crystal Palace. One too sure which way to go with this one, to be honest. Uh, Villa did have a rough patch, but they did get their confidence back with a good 2-0 victory over Everton last time around. And then Crystal Palace, well, it's just a few of draws at the moment. Yeah, Could very well be a draw, but I do think Villa is sneak it in the last minute of Villa Park 2-1. 2-1. <laughs> I've gone exactly the same as you, Nathan. Ollie Watkins is in fine form yes. at the moment, banging in the goals. I'm not sure how many is, but something like four matches on the trot. Correct me mm -hmm. in the comments section if I've got that one wrong. Crystal Palace draw specialist, so there's no reason why they can't go to Villa Park and grind out another something like a 1-1 one -one draw. However, I am going to favour Aston Villa in this one. Three wins in their last six matches. Okay, in between those uh, wins, they've had uh, three losses as well, but I'm going to go for Villa at home. If they get that, they should be safe this season anyway. 2-1 to Villa for me. Then we move on to Brighton against West Ham. Now West Ham picking up form recently, up to 16th position. Just two defeats in their last six. Two improving. Defeats. They are improving. A very, very good win against Nottingham Forest. The Forest's away form hasn't been great this season. A couple of draws in there as well. Home against Chelsea and away against Newcastle and a win against mm -hmm. Everton. So they're more than capable of getting something here at Brighton. Brighton themselves, they did lose in their last fixture where they lost 
a little bit of um, a shock that one although Fulham are currently above them in the table 1-0 they lost that one I think a very very tight match this one but I think with the form the exciting midfield that Brighton have got they want to bounce back and I'm going to go for a 2-1 home victory to the Seagulls just sneaking this one Interesting, yeah. I'm going to go <laughs> narrowly two ones to Brighton as well. I do think, but I do think West Ham will score. But at the same time, it could potentially go either way. It's just with the form of Brighton recently. Yes, Fulham have been outstanding, so you got to take that one away from them. But it is Brighton, so yeah, just going to edge unfortunately to the Seagulls. West Ham probably be a little bit of a dip for them, but I think they will bounce back onto form. To be honest, with the way they've been playing recently, so two one. Next up, we've got an interesting one: Chelsea versus Leeds. Two teams. I can't stand I will say no more 1-0 Leeds 1-0 Leeds no way wins. yes wow well saying that Thiago Silva I believe he's injured he is picked up a knock out for run about I don't know between 4 <coughs> and 6 weeks I understand that's late news for me today uh, Chelsea won this fixture last season 3-2 OK, they've got an abundance of talent in midfield. They haven't they've got a number nine. Aubameyang's not scoring. Um, that shirt number's cursed. Yeah, they, defensively they've been OK, but you can't really back Chelsea in this one. However, Leeds won victory in their last six, and that was against Southampton at home last weekend. I'm going to have to go for a Chelsea home win in this one. Very, very tight, but 1-0 to Chelsea. Finally, they'll get a victory. And then we move on to Wolves against Spurs. Very difficult to predict. Yeah, this is tough. Wolves could take all three points. Spurs could take all three points. Wolves, their form, up and down. A good draw last time out. A really really impressive. Fulham. And a lot they, they, re they looked really good last Friday night in that match against Fulham. They, Fulham did bounce back in the end. Uh, prior to that, <laughs> who would have thought they'd get beaten at home by the Cherries? Prior to that, a, a great win against Southampton and Liverpool prior to that. So, all, with all that being said, Tottenham currently in fourth position. Four wins out of their last five matches. Good wins against Chelsea and West Ham, although they haven't been in great form. I'm just going to give it to Spurs in this one. Very, very tight. Um, Sarabia who's mm -hmm. come in in the transfer window for Wolves looks really good scored in that game against Fulham as well but I am going to just sneak it to Spurs you can always rely on Harry Kane to get a goal so 2-1 to Spurs for me I think to be honest there's going to be a clash in the styles of play in this yeah. one and I've just been so impressed by Lovatagi at Wolves in the last couple of matches yes they did have that loss to Bournemouth but I still think they played well and they've been really really consistent so I think they're sneaking a point 1-1 could happen. Next up, we've got the half past five on Sky between Southampton and Leicester. Now, Southampton in the pit of doom. Hires another interim manager. I, everyone knows my opinions on them sacking Nathan Jones. Stupid decision at the end of the day because, well, replacing him with a coach already at the club, it's not going to work, unfortunately. And they just didn't back him at all and then expected him to work wonders with a squad that's not really up to the standard of some of the other sides in the in the league around them. So, yeah, and then Leicester, they've been trundling all right. Yep, they have lost their last two matches, but look who they've been playing, to be fair mm. to them. Um, and then got some good, good results and scoring goals before that. Tough. But I think Leicester sneak it 2-0. Yeah, I'm in two nines about this one. I did have Leicester down. Southampton could bounce back. They could. I, the way they've, I well, did have manager. Leicester City um, earlier today with a win on this one. But looking at the size, Tielemans is still out. Uh, there's massive question marks about Madison, whether he'll be fit for the weekend as well. So that, that's ripped out the, yeah. the core in the midfield. Harvey Barnes is there in the Nat show when he's on the pitch. Looks like he could score at any <laughs> moment. However, Southampton... Are Okay, they did lose last week. They are they 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 they're very difficult to, to score against at the moment. A good away victory against Chelsea, although everyone's beating Chelsea, aren't they, at the, mm. the moment? So I'm gonna sit on the fence on this one. I think at home on the south coast, Southampton really need the points, and I think they'll get one point in this one. So I'm gonna go for a one-one draw. Then we move on to the Sunday matches where we've got Nottingham Forest coming up against Everton. Nottingham Forest sort of form dipping after they had that resurgence two defeats in their last three matches they have had quite a few away well away matches they though. have and um, they got lots of injuries as well I was looking at their mm. injury um, 
the, their injury some, list at the moment. Too. Everton as well in the bottom three, so they'll want to try and get something out of this match as well. I think this is probably if there's going to be a game where there's going to, not going to be many goals it's this one and I think this is going to end up goalless nil-nil yeah if it was a Goodison clearly yeah, an Everton win because they've actually really improved at home only against teams who are sort of teetering a little bit this lost yeah. got destroyed by Aston Villa but that was because they've been on a really good run of form Leeds when they played them were woeful Arsenal caught them off guard and then well losing to the likes of West Ham and stuff who haven't been good but that just goes to show and that was when Lampard was in charge of course but Forest not good away form at all they have dipped yeah, a little bit but I've had some tough fixtures so I can't really make an assessment I'm going to go 2-0 to Forest. 2-0, yeah. There could be goals in there will be. this match because this is a game that both of the teams really need to win and they'll probably be targeting anyway, Nathan. We move on to the biggest game well, yes. in years gone by in the Premier League. Who have we got? Liverpool, Man United. Yes. Cannot see Liverpool winning this no. one. I'm going to keep this nice and short. Man United, impressive against Newcastle. They're going to knock on for the rest of the season now. Um, and... Yeah, first time since January 2016 that United will lit, will actually win at Anfield 2-0. Yeah, I, looking at this one all Could week, more. I was going, oh, Man United all day long, winning the Car um, Carlin Cup, winning the Carabao <laughs> Cup. Only three wins, though, out of their last six matches in the Premier League. Okay, they've had back-to-back -back wins, and both of those, they've um, kept a clean sheet against Leicester, and these are playing Liverpool at home. It's going to be a fantastic atmosphere for a change at Anfield. Yes, you could say Liverpool if want to get back there, to you will yeah, know. Liverpool want to get back to winning ways. As you said, Man United haven't actually beaten Liverpool at Anfield since 2016, and I think that's going to continue. And I think it'll end up in a bit of a stalemate. Nunes is back this evening. Gapo's on the bench. Don't know what the team's going to be like on Sunday, but I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw in this clash of the heavyweights. If uh, I recall, that was when Van Hull was in charge, wasn't it? Probably. I, I don't know. Can't remember. And the final fixture of this game week takes place on Monday evening. Brentford against what Fulham. What this is. Brentford haven't actually lost since the 23rd of October. Fulham are in fantastic form. Find themselves in sixth position. Who would have thought that at the start of the season in the Premier League? And Brentford are currently in ninth. It's West London versus West London. Very, very tight one, this one. Um, battle of midfield. Will Tony still be playing? Who knows? But I've gone for a 1 0 victory to Brentford. But there were goals earlier in the season where this finished 3 2 to Fulham. But I'm going to go for a 1 0 victory to the Bees. Exactly. Um tough one I have been I'm going to edge Fulham the only yeah. reason is because their recent record look at who they've played as well yes Brentford are grinding out the results they have stumbled a little bit draws them draws here and there destroying the likes of Southampton when they tend to t play teams around them well excluding Liverpool at the moment who they're pretty they much around them. <laughs> well 55 56 points isn't it so they are getting well, that's the outlier at the end of the day but teams around them that, or above them they're getting the draws I just think though with the way Fulham have been playing I think when they counter it go, break, go on the counter breaks make sure that defence is tightened up which we don't see in the Marco Silva teams attack Brentford on the counter attack get the odd goal or two I don't think it's going to be high scoring because Fulham matches when they win never are but they have been quite solid at the back so I'm going to go 2-1 yeah and will we see the return of Mitrovic because although mm -hmm. Solomon's be banging in the he goals could. for Fulham he could do and we probably, probably could put a few bets on it as well not to tempt fate <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see but that concludes our predictions for week 26 of the 2022-2023 Premier League season make sure you leave your predictions over at the Super Brew website and leave your comments on your thoughts on the Premier League at the moment and uh, how do you think Liverpool and Manchester United will get on as well this weekend on mm -hmm. Saturday at half past 12 Cardiff City play Bristol City in the seven side derby at the Cardiff City Stadium will Cardiff win a derby well if they and we'll don't, be there of course we will be there indeed well I don't know whether that's sadly or not but we don't win this weekend that's seven in a row don't you dare Cardiff City no. you know where to subscribe indeed thanks for joining us once again enjoy your Premier League weekend remember to submit your scores with the Subaru and we'll see you all in the next video
My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, 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 yeah.